Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to be getting the Stonework Factory set up, changing some of our, our setups, and also getting the Applied Energistic System set up that you see behind me. So, I hope you guys are ready. So last episode, I talked a little bit about getting into a thing or a mod called Flux Networks. And it's really a necessity if you're getting into acceleration wands and you've reached this point. Uh, Flux Networks is going to replace our energy transfer node, kind of. Um, we are still going to have the energy transfer node for right now. Some things are probably going to get removed from that and made faster, like the Atomic Reconstructor. Also, we're going to have an internal storage buffer because in this chest, we have an Herculean storage flux, uh, storage uh, network. This basically holds 12 million RF in this single block alone, which is really nice. We also have a couple basics as well, and uh, they all can be added together. This is 256,000 RF that this holds. So in order to get into this, we need to get into Flux Networks. Um, the best way to do this is to probably take redstone, if you have a bunch of it, um, and let's go ahead and pull it from here, actually. Probably the best way to show this. Pull out a bunch of redstone, because you're going to need a bunch of it. Take out some flint and steel, so if we have any. Well, we do have some flint. What about iron? Of course we do. And let's go ahead and add this here. That'll give us a flint and steel. And yeah, we're gonna use this to kind of just light our base on fire. No, but really, we're gonna be throwing all of this redstone in. And in return, that is going to produce flux. Just like that. Awesome, we're gonna utilize this flux real quick in making the flux network. We also need some obsidian. Let's get some of that in our inventory. And ender pearls are gonna be another thing that we're definitely going to need. So we'll grab some of those. Ender pearls stack in this in form of 64, so it's kind of interesting that we have that. But let's go ahead and get into this. We are going to need some flux cores. And that's where I said those eyes vendor are gonna come in handy. I'm gonna go ahead and make 16 of those. And we're gonna make some flux cores. 16 of them to be exact. We are going to need a flux plug, which will require a flux block. As you can see here, let's go ahead and just make that for right now. That's the flux plug. This is where you're going to input power. And then our points is where our power is going to be exported. Which you can see we need a redstone block, which we do have. Perfect. And then also to get everything to work like I want, the controller is going to be our best friend. So let's go ahead and make the flux controller. This does require one, two, three, four, five blocks of this stuff. So we are going to need a few more of these. Eyes of Ender. There we go. Looks like we can make 15 of them. So let's make as many as we can make of that. We already have one flux block. So to make this, we need a few more. So this is not that cheap of a block to make, but it is gonna be very well worth it in the end. And there we go, there's our flux controller. So the flux controller can really go anywhere. It is. It has no, like it basically doesn't matter where you place it. Um, it will work regardless. So might as well just place it right here. And if I place that there, I might as well grab my Herculean. We'll grab that. We'll also grab the basic as well. And I'll just place that on top. It doesn't have to go on top, but I'm placing it there because, you know, that's just where I want everything to be at. Now let's go ahead and create a network. We don't have to use this to create a network, but I'm going to. Um, for right now, it says select a network, but we're going to go to create new. And this is going to be chosen architects input or network. I guess we do Chosen's network, since it's too long. Leave it to private, true, on uh, allow conversions. Uh, we don't have IC2 in here, so really there's no big deal. And then we can just change it to whatever color fits our needs, and then just create the network. 
you can see these are some public networks that are on the server. Um, so yeah, right now though, we're mainly focused on our network specifically. So after you've created it, you want to click on it. And then over here, we're going to set wireless charging to enable. We're going to go into our wireless charging setting and I'm going to turn left and right hand on. So that way our tools will charge. Perfect. Now what we got to do is also set this and pick our network. There we go. And up here, pick our network. And this is going to be the storage for our network. I'm going to set this to disable on the limit transfer, even though really we don't have to worry about it at this point, but later on down the road, we might have to worry about it. All right. So now to get power into our system, we take a flux plug and we need to hook it into this system. This is basically where all of our power is going anyways. So, and we already have a connection going to it. So I'm going to disable that. I'm going to select our network. And now you'll see a thousand RF a tick is actually being input into our system. The amount of power I'm not too concerned about, right? It doesn't seem like this will actually use all of the uh, actual power. This buffer has a limit of, like I said, a thousand RF tick. It can't send any more out, but I think it can send a thousand RF tick per side. But yeah, it is limited there. So basically we're not generating the full amount of power, I don't believe. But also we're not generating the same, we're not generating a full thousand RF tick anyways. But the cool thing is, is it's going to start filling up our buffers. And this is where it really helps out with our acceleration wand. Because now any type of tool, even this, is going to stay fully charged regardless. This thing is fully charged, we just used it. Fully charged, still fully charged. Anytime I go to use the acceleration wand, it's going to stay fully charged. And that's what you want. You want this to stay fully charged. And basically that's Flux Networks in a nutshell. Very, very useful. By the way, once you start getting your chickens upgraded, the better they get, the faster they become when, it, when you're using the acceleration wand to breed them up. So keep that in mind. Also, you're gonna need some seeds and everything else like that. So today is going to be getting this set up and we're gonna also focus on a few other tasks that I have planned. One of those is to get pink slime because there's actually some pretty useful stuff that we can do with pink slime that I really wanna try out. So let's get into that. So now that I have my chickens basically up to 10, 10, 10 and we have 16 of them, um, I'm gonna go ahead and store these and uh, I'm gonna take one of these out, one of these out, basically gonna store one of them. These will be stored somewhere else eventually. We'll probably have a crate somewhere in here where we can store our chickens. Um, but for right now, I really want to make a black hole unit so I can pretty much store these guys because I'm gonna need a lot of coal specifically. So the sooner I get it done, the more I'll have later on. So I think, don't I have a couple of machine frames? Uh, I don't need a controller, I need a black hole unit. There we go. So you need a couple of eyes of ender. Am I missing, I'm missing, yeah. <laughs> of course not ender pearls. Why would I be missing ender pearls? I'm missing blaze powder. So there we go, blaze powder, black hole, eyes vendor, two of those bad boys. And I have everything but plastic, that's okay, I have some plastic in here. Perfect. And there's a black hole unit. That also unlocks another quest reward option. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use a flat transfer node for this. And I'm gonna set this up in the corner somewhere and let this guy just sort of build up, right? So we have this and we're gonna get a roost and the roost is going to be pulling the blocks out. So I went ahead and placed this on backwards by holding control when I place it. And let's go ahead and make a roost. So a roost can require some more hay bales. Looks like we're gonna have to go get some more, which is fine. I have plenty. And we'll go ahead and make an actual roost. Now this is where we're gonna put our chickens and this is where our chickens are going to be happy and they're gonna produce for us. And you can see these actually produce pretty fast and it should produce, I think three coal, three coal. Yeah, 
And that's going to be pulled out. And this should be able to keep up. So we should be able to keep up here with this. But yeah, this is basically going to store a really, really large amount. Pretty much the integer limit. And yeah, we can just leave this and let it do its thing. And we won't have to worry about it. We can just come back whenever and we're good to go. So yeah, pretty nice. Um, we'll get some chickens going on later on, but right now I really want to worry, worry about getting some pink slime. And the best way is from, you know, having these guys slaughtered. So let's get to work on a slaughter factory. I think it's called a slaughter factory. Yeah, the mob slaughter factory. To do that, well, it's very simple. As you can see here, two iron swords. Two of the uh, axe. And uh, this is basically another mob farm. Looks like we're missing a gold gear. Bam. There we go. A mob slaughter factory. But this guy will kill these. Um, it should start killing it as soon as I give it the upgrade card. So the range. Which, honestly, I don't know where I put my range upgrade. Did it disappear on me? It had to have. I don't know if we can add in here. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I probably have the upgrade card somewhere. Not called an up upgrade. Range add-on. It's somewhere because it wouldn't have let me do that. Unless it's just showing me that it's inside this one. Of course it is. Well, you know what? We can probably just turn this off. Instead of just making another one, I'll make another one later on. We can just throw this in here for right now. And that will start killing them. Except for, it's going to start producing liquid meat. This thing will produce two different types of fluids. And yeah, we're going to have to get both of those fluids out. It actually doesn't drop any mob drops. But it does consume the fluids. And we need to produce, as you can see here, meat and pink slime. Pink slime is going to take a little bit longer to get. But over time, we should hopefully generate some pink slime, I think. If not, we can also get cows that will also produce pink slime later on. So that's not going to be that big of an issue as well. Look at that. Huh. Hoping to see more pink slime build up. So when it comes to the mob slaughter factory, if you want to easily get the pink slime out, you can go ahead and get yourself any type of filter uh, for fluids or any type of fluid pipe and hook it into this thing. And here's where the config happens. Over here, you can disable all the sides for your liquid meat um, because you can actually get this out of here another way. Um, but right here, the pink slime, that's the one you want. And um, if you disable all the sides but the front, which is technically the back of it, because that's the front, I think, the part that grinds the mobs, I would consider that the front. But anyways, the front is apparently the side that's facing this way. Um, you can actually just drain the pink slime out perfectly, just like so. And what you do with that pink slime is you're going to take a bucket. You're going to bucket it out. You need to dig a little hole. Place the pink slime in there. By the way, if you hop in, you're going to get a glowing effect. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, you just basically wait for him to spawn. And when it spawns, I'm going to smack him with this birthday pick. Yep. I'm going to give him the Dark Osto pick. And then you should be really happy. Yeah, okay, we already have 400 in there. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, we just kind of have to not look at it, I guess. I don't know. I've always had different people say different things about this, but I find that if I don't look at it, it's more likely to spawn. <laughs> but it only takes a little bit of time, um, sometimes a minute or so, and you will get a pink slime, and it will come after you and try to kill you. Basically. Oh, look, he already spawned. Now, it's not 100% for you to get the drop from this, but 
I got lucky this time. And look at that. I got two pink slime. What I want this for is the cobble, or not cobble, stone work factory. The material stone work factory is a blessing, man. This thing is amazing. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. We're going to need a furnace, a bucket of lava. Like, it doesn't get any better than that. Literally a bucket of water and lava. Let's grab a uh, lava from in here. What else do we need? Iron pick. We can use um, the machine frame from this mod. A crafting table. And we'll use the machine frame from thermal. Because I made a few of those. And there's a material stonework factory. Basically, what this thing can, can do is it can do everything except for this side. It can do everything that this can do right here. So, yeah, we can dump this. I'll take all of those materials. I need to store them inside my uh, dump chest here. Actually, this can be all compressed. This can be compressed. Doing shift K while in a crafting grid will compress all to stacks. Letting us pick everything up. Do shift K again on anything that can be stacked. If given, given that there's room in your inventory for it. Just like so. That gives us a little bit more space. So yeah, I'm going to pick up all these items. Try to. I don't think I can delete them. There's something weird with the trash can. Sometimes it wants to work, sometimes it don't. Sometimes it wants and sometimes it doesn't want to work. So we're just going to clear out our inventory. Just like that. Perfect. And yeah, we can go ahead and get this thing set up. Now, this will already, already draw power from the back, so we should be good there. But this was producing sand, right? And what we need now, and this actually should already pull out as well. Um, it should automatically pull out sand. We'll have to configure this, though. But what you can do is you can set this to, huh, I want to make a bunch of gravel. And then I want to crush that gravel down into sand. And then if you really wanted to, you can get fancy, you can crush that sand down into dust. If you want to get even more fancy, you can crush that dust down into silicon. Or, yeah, silicon. Just like that. If you really wanted to. If you wanted to get fancy with it. But you can turn these off and just make sand, and this guy will fill with sand. And honestly, it'll work the exact same way. We can just kind of remove these as we go. And this will make this process a lot, a lot easier. Look at that. Now, if you want to get this to actually pull properly, we need to make sure this is configured in the back. Specifically for this section, all of these need to be disabled. Same for this one. Just disable all of that. We don't have to worry about energy or power. Just this one. We need to make sure that you can access it from the back. And we should be able to. And as you can see, it's keeping up with the sand. So, yeah. That's not that hard to understand, I don't think. And this only requires 40 RF a tick. Whereas each one of these machines require 40 RF a tick. So yeah, we're going to be making a couple of these stonework factories. So with Industrial 4 going, I try to show this as much as possible, but there's this really cool thing called a meat feeder. And basically you just need some glass bottles, which uh, I think we have. Yeah, there we go. And so yeah, some more plastic. You need just a little bit of plastic. And this thing is really cool because if we put it in here, this is where I say, oh. It just got sucked into our uh, system. I think it's a non-stackable item, so it might have got put in here. Yeah. So basically, this thing fills up. Let's just say that. And we can place it in here, and that will consume this. I need to make sure this is turned off. The item section? Fluid containers? Make sure this can't be pulled out. Also, yeah, here as well. 
But yeah, basically you can put this in here. That's going to fill its internal capacity. And as long as it's inside of our inventory, it will keep our saturation bar saturated. Yeah, it will auto inject liquid meat into us. As weird as that sounds. Um, it definitely does do that. Wow, I can't believe our storage is already full. Man, oh man, we have a lot of power, so we need to get put that power to use very soon. But anyways, I just wanted to show that. That's something we've got done. I do have now all of these turned into material stonework factories, so they are chugging away. We have upgraded this. We're still sieving. Um, I could make this a little bit better if I, or a little bit faster if I used compressed, but right now this is literally voiding off most of the stuff anyways. Um, so a lot of these things are hitting their max and they will start to be voided. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, want to get as much stuff as possible. Diamonds is nice. This, this will all help us with EMC whenever we get to that point. We'll be able to pretty much get a jump boost in EMC production. Yeah, I just wanted to mention this. I can just come by here anytime when this is full. I can leave this mob farm running. I, right now I have this one turned off. I don't really need it running at the moment. But yeah, it's doing, everything's doing its part. Everything's looking good. Oh man, this is getting fun. This is getting fun here. So I mentioned last episode that I really want to try and get into applied logistics since we do have now wireless power and a few other nice things. So in order to get started with applied logistics, we actually need to make the presses. Uh, usually you have to find these. These are usually the first thing you have to do, but in this pack, you can just make them. They're pretty easy. You just need a block of Invar, uh, which we should be able to make at least four blocks of Invar. If I don't already have them in here, let's do Invar. Oh yeah, totally do. So let's go ahead and make four blocks of Invar. That's what we're going to need. We need gold. One piece, diamond, we have one right here, piece of Certus Quartz, I don't think it has to be charged, and I think the other piece is just silicon. So yeah, I need to basically take out the stone here, I need to get this converted over into silicon. So there we go. And now inside the induction smelter, which has no power at the moment, we will get this thing power, trust me. Let's go ahead and pull out this GPS marker. I really don't know what some of these are hooked to. I really need to redo them very soon. But we're gonna throw this back in here. That should definitely give it power at this point. There we go. And yeah, let's go ahead and make these. So I'm gonna place this here and go ahead and get the first one started. By the way, you can use the acceleration wand on this and that does speed it up. So there's our logic. There's that. Like, look how fast that actually is. It's already done. Yeah, and bam, we're good. So there's all the presses we need, but we actually need the inscriber to be able to do this, uh, to start making some of the stuff. But the inscriber is not what I probably want to make. Uh, first, we need a flux. So let's go ahead and make this. This is going to require charge quartz, charge source quartz, which we should have plenty of. Yeah, this is the charge stuff. We need quartz, which I have plenty of as well, and redstone. So first, I'm going to make a couple stacks of this. Redstone. Let's do, you know, let's do two stacks each of this. We I always use a lot of this stuff, and you end up using definitely more than a stack. So we have a water hole right here. Let's just throw it in. And we can pretty much get everything lined up. That way we can just toss it in quickly and back out of the way. So. Well, as you can see, that didn't go so quick, but there we go. The quartz is some of this is going to float to the top, but it, all in all, this is all going to be converted into flux crystals, just like that. We also have a flux block that's somewhere nearby that we ended up getting. Oh yeah, it was in here. Yeah, we got some four flux blocks, which 
by the way, gets converted. But um, anyways, we can utilize those later. So yeah, we have that done. Let's go ahead and make the inscriber. Oh yeah, it's going to require sticky pistons. Well, we're going to need a few few pistons for this. So I guess we need some wood. So a few pistons. Now, the inscriber is not exactly the tool that I want to use to get into the applied energistics. We can go ahead and actually upgrade this to an advanced inscriber once we get at least two engineering processors. So yeah, getting to this point is fairly easy. Let's go ahead and make the inscriber. Look at that, we got the quest complete. Look at all these quests, by the way. Let's go ahead and drop our inscriber down near somewhere that has power. What has power? This has power, right? It's definitely lost some power somewhere. Probably in here, because it was pushing power out so fast. I don't know, we'll give it power over here. Where it has a constant flow. Awesome. Um, so, to get started, we definitely need to first take our silicon and get that processing. We should have some more over here. Let's get that made. Let's get another one. We also need to grab some redstone for this process. We need our engineering press. And for that, we need a couple of diamond. I think I have some in here. And we need two of those. And you can actually acceleration one this, by the way. If you want to. You'll see it progress whenever this hits. There we go. And last but not least is we need to convert this into an actual chip. So yeah, there's that engineering mm. processor. And there's this engineering processor. Perfect. All of that can be used to convert this into a much, much better press. So, so much better that you only need one. Right? Where'd it go? Here it is. You literally only need one of these. What am I missing? A hopper? No. Yeah, I guess it's just a hopper. Oh, we're missing a chest. Wow, out of all of that, we're literally just missing a chest. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and actually craft this bad boy. Uh, after all of that craziness. Let's see. Can I make it now? Oh wait, I still have to craft the hopper. There we go. And there's the advanced inscriber. So this bad boy is pretty cool, actually. Um, I might just put it right here for now. Since it's going to be up against this, uh, this will be east, and that'll keep that power for right now. I don't know if this requires applied energistic power. I, it actually might require applied energistic power now that I think about it. Which is fine because we can we can upgrade this. I'm not I'm not too concerned about that. Let's just try. Yeah, this is going to require AE power. Okay, so, to get anything from AE to work like this, we're going to need an energy acceptor, and this thing is not that difficult to make. We need a little bit of quartz. Some things that we need to get definitely going along, like, right away, is a lot of quartz being pulverized. A lot. And we also need to shut this down. We need to make sure that this does not produce... Turn that on. Make sure this does not grind up or smelt the resulting nether quartz dust that we're going to be getting here. Don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and get our energy acceptor. That is going to require some quartz glass. 
which is what we're working on right now. Um, let's see, glass. How much do we have? We got plenty of glass. So yeah, really we're just waiting on this stuff to pulverize. So I can kind of give it a little jump boost, pulverizing that there. Let's go ahead and get some of that glass made. Energy acceptor. Let's make that glass. And let's go ahead and make the energy acceptor. Look at that. We're already getting into applied energistics. How cool. Really all we need now is a crafting monitor and we're ready to go uh, in a couple of storages because we ended up getting the ME drives as a loot reward. So we really don't have to make these extra processors to get this going. We really just need logic processors. And normally I start off with eight 1K drives because a lot of the stuff that I have usually doesn't need a lot of storage. It just needs a lot of item slots. And so, yeah, that's normally what I end up doing. So let's take this. Um, I guess for right now I'm gonna place it down here. Let's go ahead and get a point made. Since points are actually pretty cheap to make. Might actually have enough. There we go, to make a point. <laughs> I have enough to make a point. Yeah, a point. There we go. Let's choose our network. And now, this should charge this bad boy. As you can see, this is going to start working. And this allows you to automate, but it also allows you to... That's right. You can really speed this thing up with an acceleration wand. Really fast. This thing's already fast to, in general, but... With, even without upgrades, this thing can go pretty fast. So if we swap this around, let's get some gold. Because who doesn't like some gold? By the way, I have these all set to blocks because I was running out of space. So let's get Logic Press. Of course, Acceleration 1, this bad boy. It's really only going to go as fast as our uh, Energy Acceptor can give it power, but this actually is a weird conversion from RF to E. So, or from AE. So let's go ahead and get that done. Now we should be able to throw these in with some redstone and actually make some logic processors. These are going to be very useful, and we're going to need these. Okay. So basically to get a regular system set up, let's take a look at a crafting monitor. Let's go ahead and find this bad boy. Where is it at? Crafting terminal. So we're going to need a calculation press. This is going to be the weird one, right? Because a calculation press requires a pure Sardis Quartz crystal. You could go this route. You can also go the enrichment chamber route. That's another way to do this. The enrichment chamber actually is a really good way. Um, you can speed it up instantly almost. Or we can go this route. We can go ahead and make a crystal growth accelerator. Um, this is going to require a little bit of ME glass, which we haven't really made yet. So let's do that. We're going to need some anyways. Let's go ahead and get this stuff made. Crystal growth, right? So we need growth fibers. We need a little bit of that. A little bit of cable. All right, we're going to need a bit of this Fluix cable anyways. And turn these into some growth accelerators with some glass. Let's make some growth accelerators. We need six. We're missing Fluix blocks, basically. So we need two more. And guys, we pretty much have this in the bag. This is super easy. Like, it takes no time at all. They don't want you to... They don't want it this to be hard. This mod wouldn't be in here if it, they wanted it to be hard on you. There's a chest. I think. Right? Chest. Chest. Perfect. And guys, there is a crystal growth chamber. Another really, really useful tool. So, what I can do here is take some of this crystal here. I need this to be swapped over. 
This will still be next. But I need this to be pulverized. This is special. The Surtis Quartz. Um, let's go ahead. Since we only need one, I'm going to go ahead and get this done. I'll take some sand. Let's get our messy inventory cleaned up here. Okay. Looks like our, our grid's completely full. Um, let's pull out... Our inscribers, because we definitely need those. Um, and we need to take this Certus and combine it with sand, and that'll get us Certus seeds. And here, you just place it in here and just let it go, and it's going to grow. We can acceleration one that, and look at there, we have pure Certus. It's that, it's that fast. Um, so, what we're going to need here is our calculation. Of course, that's going to be really fast. Make two of those. We need to step back here, grab some of this, some of this, some of that, you know, get that going. Did I throw out my redstone? I did. There we go. Pull that out. Should be able to get that in there. I'm trying to get this done as fast fast as I possibly can. Like, this is like speed running an, an AE system. Like, no joke. Um, and yeah. Craft. It's crafting terminal. Alright, so we're gonna need a little bit of this. Oh yeah, we need to take Fluix as well. Fluix, I forgot, also needs to be pulverized. On top of everything else, this also needs to be pulverized. Having this upgraded would have been way faster. So there's some Fluix dust. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this, this uh, thing crafted. Bam. That is some quartz. We need an illuminated panel. Guess we're missing glowstone. There's an illuminated panel. Oh, I guess we already had some. That's fine. We'll, we'll use these later on down the road. Did I make that panel? Oh, it's telling me I need a bright one, but no, you don't. So there's a terminal. Now we need to combine this with a crafting table. What? There we go. Crafting terminal. What? What are we missing? I just made a crafting table. This thing. This thing, guys. Let's grab some wood. We're going to hand make a crafting terminal. This is why I'm trying to get into applied energistics. Oh, man. And last but not least, there we go. Oh, a crafting terminal. Now, we're going to need a ME drive. Or not a drive. A, um... Uh, a 1K ME storage cell basically, is what we need. So we need one of these. We should be able to make these. I want eight of them? What am I missing? Or eight. Redstone? Pfft. We got plenty. Actually, I need ten of them to fill one, one whole drive. The problem we're probably going to run into is needing that quartz glass. Right, that's probably what I'm going to run into, a power issue. Alright, let's go ahead and remove this. Throw that there. Let's get this guy placed. Wherever I want it, I don't really know yet. Uh, for right now, it's going to go here, I guess. Um, and we need some cables. 
Well, yeah, I'm just going to place it here for right now. People can deal with it. These got to come with me. One can go here. One can go here. And remember, we have those uh, drives. Right here, ME drives. I can place that in the back. And throw my 1Ks in there. Should be able to make some more. Okay, shows we're out. And guys, that is a full setup here. All we need now is a point, giving it power. For right now, with this janky setup, of course, we're going to make this look nicer. Place our screen on it. Bam. We can start throwing items. Just don't throw your tablet in there, or you will lose all of your stuff. And that's no fun. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that at all. So, all I got to do now is clear all my stuff from this tablet and dump it into here, and we're ready to go. Um, now, I can make this blend into the wall a little bit better. Uh, I did go ahead and place it down here. Um, I pretty much have my power, and then everything can be connected to this one thing. Because really, this is only using one, two, three, four channels worth of... And uh, I even have another drive where I can just throw this in. So if I want to have two drives, I can place another drive up here and kind of make it a little bit symmetrical. But like I was saying, if you want to make covers, you can kind of do this and kind of make it blend in with your stone. Um, covers is not that hard to make. What you need is anchors, cable anchors. These guys right here. You're going to need a cutting tool. And you're going to need to cut some iron. And that'll get you some cable tools. I don't or some cable anchors. I don't need that many. And I only need a piece of stone. You take the stone and surround it by the cable anchors, and you'll get a cable facade or cover. And you just click that on there and look at that. Our system is now covered. Perfect. And yeah, we can still access it and everything. And yeah, it just blends in now. You just have a cover, or you just have a uh, thing right in this stone wall. Pretty nice. Now, I always set this to JEI uh, Synchronize Keep. Basically, I can search in here and search in here separately. Like, this will override, of course, up here. But if I search in here and leave, come back, it will reset. So, just a couple things to keep in mind. But yeah, basically, we can really start unloading some... Uh, some good stuff in here for crafting recipes and yeah we can just keep this thing because I mean really all that stuff that was in our card look how much storage space it used out of these basic 1k drives which are really easy to make I mean it doesn't take too much 1k drives is what you want to use if you're storing a large amount of individual items and then the 64k drives are what you want to use to store your large quantity items. So say like cobblestone. You can store a very large amount of cobblestone in one 64 drive. So that's kind of what you want to do, and that's what I'm doing. And But now we have an applied energistic system, and this thing is absolutely phenomenal, guys. So real quick, right before the end of the video, I know this sort of like jumped right towards the end. I almost forgot. We have so many quests to kind of look at, and I hope, I hope this isn't like a a lost cause, but I, I saved up all of these quests to open up on camera, so hopefully we can get a good reward. Our inner chests aren't bad. Epic bacon, come on, give me something nice. Ooh, an inventory crafting table's not bad. Alright, that's not that great either. Not, uh, more climbing gloves, that's all we need is more climbing gloves. Oh, si 16 times speed upgrades are really nice, those will be useful later on. Another cobblestone generator. Oh, man, another double layer capacitor. Another cobblestone generator. Man, these are rigged against me. An Invar hammer. All right. My morale's dipping. An ender tank. We have those. A torch launcher. A draconic core. Okay. 
Uh, four basic ambassadors. And... Ooh, two resonant conversion kits. I will take those. Those are going to be very, very nice. Bam. Bam. These definitely need it. Oh, that's going to be so nice. Those paired with the coils. Those paired with these auxiliary coils. Oh my gosh. We can totally, totally, totally get away with this. That's seven. Am I missing one? Might have gold. What? There we go. Oh man, these upgraded, by the way. Are so fast. Now. Oh, that just made life so much easier. If I want to grind down Lapis, huh, no problem. Look how fast that is. That is a wonderful... Oh, I'm so happy because of that. But anyways, guys. <laughs> oh, man. That's so good. So, we're on episode 10. It's been absolutely amazing so far. You guys have been very, very supportive. Especially here on the server. Right now, I am up very, very early in the morning. It's 6 a.m. in the morning for me. Our server has basically been peaking at almost 50 players. It's been pretty crazy, pretty chaotic, bouncing around with that many players. Um, so at night, I, I usually seem to be able to play uh, by the by that time of day. Um, and so, yeah, I've been able to meet a lot of you guys. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Um, and some of you guys are absolutely hilarious. Um, but yeah. We've been, we've been trying our best uh, to manage everything, keeping everything up and running, keeping everything doing it like it's supposed to. And uh, yeah, you guys have been just subbing, man. You guys are amazing. I just want to say thank you at the end of the video. But anyways, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't subscribed already, I highly recommend doing so. I post daily videos, sometimes twice a day. So uh, yeah, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Being subbed lets you guys see that those content whenever or see that those videos right when they come out. Fresh off the press. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.